Hi hey Josh, how are you doing? Thanks for right. coming in today. Thank you. Um, how was your trip in? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's it's no, no traffic, perfect. Yeah? yeah? Nice work. Where did you come in from? Uh, Whitton, so it's only 15 minutes. Oh, okay, that's, uh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Traffic is alright then. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Nice work. Nice work. Okay, um, so look, firstly, yeah, thanks for coming in. And uh, I just wanted today to go through some basic information with you. So I suppose like the purpose of what we want to do is find out what goals you have mm -hmm. when you, for joining the gym. We're going to look maybe at any barriers that might be in your way and how we can kind of maybe look at overcoming that. Um, also maybe to have a look at your previous exercise routine. So what successes you had there or kind of what reasons you kind of relapsed out of those maybe. Yeah. And then at the end of the consultation I just want to get some health screening measurements. So we're just maybe going to look at your BMI measurements, your blood pressure and things like that just to do a quick health screen with you. Yeah. Uh, is all that sound good? Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice work, nice work. Um, as well, actually, just when I'm thinking about it, thanks very much for completing your park queue and informed consent and sending those back in to us. Everything was all good with those. Um, and there isn't any changes to that no, or anything? No, no, no. Good stuff, good stuff. Just so you know as well, in terms of uh, the gym here, all your information and all the information that I take today is going to be kept confidential. So, you know, you can be kind of safe in the knowledge, it's all kept secure and confidential. Um, we won't share it with anyone without your consent or anything like that. Um, so just in terms of kind of giving you some information about myself, I've met you already, so you know, my name's Ian. Uh, I've been a gym instructor here for about two years now. Um, and in terms of like my role, I suppose, my, my, my role for you today would be to kind of design a, a fitness program for you that you can maybe work on over the coming four, six weeks or whatever it is in terms of goals that you want to set for yourself. But also maybe to show you how to safely use some of the equipment that we have in the gym. If you have any questions on any particular types of exercises, maybe I can help with that as well. Um, and, I'll, and just to in induct you into the gym and make sure you can safely work workout yeah, yeah, yeah. basically so you know then as well if there's any kind of uh, specialist kind of uh, things that you're looking at so for example like sports massage or if you're looking for a personal trainer I can signpost you towards the personal trainers in the gym and we have a sports massage therapist here as well so you, okay, can, cool. you can kind of take take advantage of that as oh. well any questions on no 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 oh, okay so can you tell me a little bit about yourself so what do you do as a, uh, as a job uh, office based, but working in office pretty much sedentary. <laughs> yeah. Nine till five, sitting around, either working from home on the sofa or uh, working in an office at a desk. Yeah, yeah pretty pretty mundane. Is that close to home or do you do much travelling? No, it's, it's local to the gym, so in Chelmsford. So uh, okay. yeah, so I'm local to here, so it would be ideal for me oh. to come here. There's no excuse. I've just come in either before work and lunchtime or after work. I haven't really got an excuse. I've just got to do it. Nice work, okay, fair yeah. enough. And um, so is it typically nine to five or do you work earlier? Uh, yeah, typically nine to five. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Super it is. Yeah. And do you kind of travel with work at all or is it all the No, no, I'm very, very much office based. If I do travel, it would be for a day and oh. I'll, be, I'll be home. I, I, I've got a 10 month old baby, so I'm not like I staying away. Congratulations on that. <laughs> so, how's your sleep with that? Is that. <sighs> Yeah, hit and miss. Yeah, do but you get like, because obviously we've recommended like six to eight hours sleep per night. I, 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 I always get six, I'll always get six hours, yeah. but uh, sometimes eight might be pushing it, but I will get about six. <laughs> Fair play, yeah. Excellent stuff. So, in terms of, um, let's say, your previous exercise experience, have you done any exercise in the past? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, um, I was mainly sport. I played a lot of, uh, swam a lot, played tennis a lot. Um, gym based, was a regular gym goer probably a couple of years back, then sort of got out of the habit of it due to right, work. I sort of got, got a little bit higher up in, the, in work and did more hours there, then the little one arrived and it sort of took a back step, whereas now it's got to a point where I need to get moving again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, super. So you just mentioned there, I've just taken some notes as we go through. And you just mentioned there, obviously you did a little bit of sport when you were younger and things, but you said that you were a regular gym goer. Was that, how long ago was that? Was that Probably about two years ago. About two years ago, okay. Yeah, yeah. And what did you find in terms of what you liked in the gym, or did you have any kind of main area that you went to or anything like that? The more free weight side of things more than anything else, probably. I'd, like, I'd do cardio, but it wouldn't be uh, 
too much of a high intensity cardio, it would be very much like, I suppose we can call it fat burn. Right. I'd be on there for maybe 10, 15 minutes. If I was in it for an hour, probably 40, 50 minutes of it would be weight based, I preferred the weight side of things. Okay, so you, you kind of mentioned cardio there, and I know, is it just in terms of the variety of cardio that you, you maybe weren't aware of? So like, you know, you can do a number of different kind of cardio styles of training, let's say. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's pro probably a bit of that. It was probably also because of the sport I played with, swimming, tennis and stuff, it was all CV based, yeah. the majority of the training, so yeah. I just found it boring. Yeah. It was more like, I couldn't do. Yeah. Slow, steady for long periods of time. I didn't really enjoy it. So yeah, different different styles of cardio might be. Yeah. Okay, so, so but, but I mean, in terms of that, I often find that it's a bit of a barrier for people because, from my own experience, I find that people just don't know the various types of cardio yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah. But maybe a good strategy to overcome that might be to attend some of the hit classes that we have here. Yeah, they're kind of short, sharp classes. Get the heart rate up. So it might be the fact that, like you know. We, you mentioned you're close to the gym. We have some going on in the morning and we have some at lunchtime. You could get up here for a session at lunchtime, get in, the session's half an hour, and get your cardio working that way. Yeah, so that it might be a good strategy yeah. to overcome yeah, 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 yeah. getting your cardio. cardio just doing. But also, what, what that would do for us is it would allow your gym sessions to be more based on your preferences in terms of doing weights. So after we do some warm ups, you can head straight to your weight session. Okay, and yeah. And also, we're kind of splitting the cardio out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I often find it's a good way to overcome that barrier because I find the people who come in, if they're if they let's say dislike the walking on a treadmill, for example, it's a good way to overcome that in terms of just yeah 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 getting to your weight based session straight away. So you mentioned obviously you, you, you quite like your you quite enjoy your weights training. Was it you, you mentioned that you did a split routine? Was it yeah yeah? And how would you work that? Yeah, I did. I used to split the routine up into four. I'd go four right. times a week, so I'd do a leg day, a back day, chest and triceps together, and then shoulders and biceps. And that's okay. I just found one on the internet and, and followed okay. that basically. But it seemed to yeah. be I, I, I enjoyed it. So, so you, found, you found it was a good routine. Yeah, to work yeah, no, I did. And doing four days a week meant that I, I wouldn't miss a day. Yeah. If I tried to split it another day, I'd probably find that I'd miss my leg day, yeah. for example. Oh, okay. So yeah, putting in four sessions a week is really good because, yeah, if you can get here four times a week and then get some of your cardio work in as well, that's really good. Okay, so in terms of goals, um, what would your overarching goal be, let's say? Probably, I'd like to get back to where I was maybe two years ago, so I was right. probably a stone lighter than what I am now. I probably had more muscle, I felt broader across the shoulders and um, just in terms of overall energy levels, it just felt good, whereas now I feel sluggish, slumped, I don't do enough, overarching, it's just to, yeah, I'd, I'd rather, uh, lose a stone would probably be the first thing, then put on some muscle afterwards and overall, and from, from the get-go, I, I know the exercise is going to make me feel okay. better anyway. So, I suppose, yeah, so like you, you mentioned yourself there, if, we, if you can start to lose a little bit of weight, mm. then you'll start seeing the results happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, just, you mentioned something there, you said like, uh, you'd like to get back to where you were two years ago, but you've also mentioned that you, you have a little boy now as well. Mm -hmm. In terms of time, is that... It, it will make it more challenging, yeah. so that's why I've joined a gym local to work, yeah. so when I go in, I've got no excuse not to come in the morning, so I prefer oh. training in the morning. Okay. So I can come in before work. I know the gym's 24 hours, so I've got yeah. no excuse. Um, so yeah, it, there should be, even though right, sleep may be affected, but in terms of uh, barriers of coming in, yeah. I, I should have no problem. Okay, so what we could do is like, if you can try and establish the days you're gonna get in, that's yeah. a really good way, because you're committing to days that you wanna get in in the morning, and that's a really good uh, way to kind of cement the, the habit of getting into the yeah. gym, let's say. So you mentioned like, okay, losing a stone, so how long would you think, over, over what kind of time frame would you like to do that? Realistically, I, could, I should be able to do that in, I don't know, three months, does that sound about right? Yeah, I mean, you, we, we could look at around three months. So what I'd like to do is we, we just want to establish like, and solidify your goals, let's say, yeah. put in some smart goals for you. So let's say if we took a longer term goal of losing a stone in, in let's say three months. So I'm just going to scribble this down here. So, um, where would you like to be, let's say, in 
kind of six to eight weeks, let's say, so as a medium term goal. Um, probably working my way towards that. So if we were doing three months, I'd probably say halfway there, sort of, you know, yeah. we half a stone off. Yeah. Um, okay. My energy levels feeling better. I'd, yeah, I'd, that would be a good, a good place. I'd be really happy with that in that time. So it, it would be ideal. I mean, it, obviously, you, you set your kind of longer term goal. We break, we break it down into your medium term goal. Now, in terms of a short term goal, for me, like you say, you know, you've been I was in the gym for a little while. For me, I suppose my, the, the short term goals I like to set with people would be kind of like weekly or bi weekly goals, let's yeah. say. So maybe as opposed to looking at the weight loss, what we need to do is try and establish a routine of getting into the gym. So if you don't mind, like I, I'd like to suggest maybe of setting a short term goal of just getting into the gym or for three or let's say actually four sessions. You mentioned four, sorry. So doing four sessions a week just for the first two weeks and then we can review yeah. that and maybe once you've established that routine then we can start looking at it. Build up my consistency. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, no, that's great. That? No, that's that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like say if I'm doing that, I think the other stuff should follow. Yeah. Excellent stuff. So I think we've got some goals here. I can set those down. Obviously, I'll, I'll send you out everything that we've got. So the only thing I'd, I'd kind of like to do here now would be, as I mentioned at the start, I want to take some uh, health screening measurements from you. So what I'm going to look at is your resting heart rate. I'm also going to take a blood pressure measurement from you. Uh, we'll take your height and weight. We'll calculate what's called your BMI, which actually we can start feeding that result straight into your goals there. Yeah. Um, and also, I'm going to do a waist circumference and a hip circumference measurement, so that we can calculate something called waist to hip ratio in terms of like fat distribution for you. Um, and we can feed that one directly into your into your uh, losing your weight mm -hmm. goal as well. Um, so yeah, so if we can just, I'm going to move over here and we can we can start taking those measurements. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's fine. fine. Yeah, stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to take it for 15 seconds. Just relax. Okay, so let me just calculate that. Let me just calculate that. That was here. So that's come out there at roughly 75 beats per minute, okay? And um, I think it's 75 beats per minute. Ideally, normally we're talking a, a resting heart rate between 60 and 80 is quite good, so you're, you're quite within that healthy range. Um, what you might find is the cardio will help to bring that down a little bit. So we'll measure that again later on and see where we're at with that, okay? Mm -hmm. So the next one I'm going to do is your uh, blood pressure. Have you had your blood pressure done before? I have had yeah, okay. the doctors before, yeah. Okay, so it's just in terms for us, we check it just in terms of, uh, to give us a really good health indicator of the pressure uh, of the blood in the arteries internally. So I'm just going to take the blood pressure. Now, normally I take it three times. And then we take an average of the mm -hmm. result that we get. Okay, and I'll talk you through the results as well. So, what I'd like to do, Josh, is put this on your left arm. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to put this on here for a sec. And then so you put this on there for me. Yeah. I'm just going to set that so it runs down the inside of your arm here. And just pop that up over your. Uh, well, I'm just going to check there. Is that comfortable? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's fine. Fine. If you want to relax your arm onto the table, okay. okay. So what you'll find is you might find that tighten up just a little bit. But if you can just relax um, while we take the blood pressure, that would be great. Okay, so you can see your, your blood pressure results here. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we've taken it out three times and we've had very similar results. You can see that we've got 127 over 79, which is pretty much perfect. So yeah. you can just scribble that down and I'll talk you through. We'll take this off here first. 
Excuse me. So, with the uh, blood pressure, so with the blood pressure, it just represents the pressure of uh, blood exerted on the arteries when the heart beats. Mm -hmm. So obviously when we exercise, you know that the heart is going to beat a little bit harder. So we want to make sure that we're well within a healthy range there. So if I just show you here, you can see on the scale that we have here, ideally, uh, the ideal blood pressure is 120 over 80. Yeah. Obviously, if you went into 140 over uh, 90, you'd be into what we call hypertension, let's say, or high blood pressure. But you fall back like well within the healthy range. 127 over 79 is perfect, and that's what you want. So I'm not going to explode. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Excellent stuff. So the next measurements I want to take really are the height and the weight because we want to calculate your, your what we call your body mass index. Yeah. Um, and we take the waist circumference and hip circumference as well. Okay. So if I can get you to step over here towards the uh, height measurement for me. Okay, so uh, Josh, we're going to take your height there first. So if you don't mind just yeah. stepping onto the platform there for me, would you yeah. back to it? That's great. Just nice straight back for me there. It's perfect. I'm just going to. So we're bang on 175 there. Yeah. And then I also want to just take a weight uh, here in yeah. kilograms. Yeah. So if I keep that in the this right, so. Okay, so you can step off that. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is I'm going to calculate what we call your BMI, which is a body mass index. And effectively, it's just a relationship between your height and your, or your weight and your height. Sorry. So what we do is we take your weight in kilograms and divided by your height in which you're squared. So just give me a second there and I'll get that done for you. So your BMI there, I'm just rounding it up a little bit. Your BMI is coming out at 27, mm -hmm. which if I just show you the chart that we've got here, you can see that where you're at 27, it's just pushed you into the yeah, yeah, yeah. category. But actually, as we were discussing earlier, if we can take that weight off, that would bring you down into this green category here, into the healthy category in the BMI, and that would be a really good goal. So that's a really good goal that we've established for yourself then, okay? Yeah. Excellent stuff. So the last kind of two measurements that I want to take are what we call a waist to hip ratio. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a waist circumference and I'm going to take a, a hip circumference. So I've just got a tape measure here. Uh, I'm just going to move this out of your way here a sec, just so we don't hit it. So in terms of taking a waist uh, circumference, what I'm going to do is, can I get you to, I'm going to take it on your uh, belly button effectively. Yeah. Now, we, there's a number of different ways we can do this. I can take your belly button an inch above and an inch below. But for me, I like the consistency of having the same measurement. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So I know people can sometimes look at their waist a bit differently. But if I can get you to just pop this onto your uh, belly button for yeah. me, just lift this arm for me. If I can get you to turn slowly uh, away from me, that's it. And then, just, yeah, so there, and we can just kind of get you to move your finger there for me. Six, super stuff, you can leave that go. That's nice work. So, we have 92 centimetres there, so you just have to remember that for a minute. Mm -hmm. So, what we're going to do is we're also going to measure the widest part of the hips, okay? So, normally, when we take the widest part of the hips, is there's two ways we can find it. There's a, a joint here where you can feel a ball kind of sticking out that tends to represent the widest part of the hip. Or if I get you to flex your hip for me and follow the crease out, mm -hmm. you'll also kind of come across to that. Oh, okay. So if you just hang on to this and just, if you lift your leg, if you now find them kind of come out the side here, you'll find that you feel yeah. the bone here. So that's yeah. roughly the widest part of the hip again. So if I can get you to put this tape onto that for me, mm -hmm. and if I can get you to turn slowly again. Could I just get you to lift your top just a little bit here for me? That's it. And we've come across the widest part of the hips here. Perfect. And there we've got 109. So 92 and 109. That's fine. You can just drop the tape there for me. Let me just grab my chart here again. So we had 82 centimeters from the waist. Yeah. We had 109 centimeters. You can tell straight away Ideally, we want the hips to be bigger than the waist, so you can tell straight away that we'll have a good ratio there. But I'll just calculate that for you. And that comes in at 0.9 actually, which is again, if I just show you here, you can see here with the 
sorry, let me find that again. You can see here with the uh, waist to hip ratio, if you're looking at like 0.9 or under, that means that you're in the head of the category. Uh -huh. And yeah, so that puts you in a good category there. So we've established a really good test here. Uh, we're just going to sit down again for a minute and just review those and then I'll get you on your way. Cool. All right. Yeah. Okay, so thanks very much for getting your measurements done there with us, Josh. Um, so as I explained on the way through, you've actually got some really good results. Uh, your resting heart rate is falling well within the healthy category, as is your blood pressure, which is really key. Uh, as I mentioned, the BMI is just slightly yeah. into that overweight category. But I thought it was going to be the case. Yeah. Yeah, and, and as we said, like, we've established a goal already for that so that we can start working towards that healthy category. But the, the waist to hip ratio, is actually within the kind of healthy or lower risk range mm -hmm. for us there as well. So, do you have any questions on that yourself? No, no, uh -huh. I think because we've got some, we've got some good goals. Like you say, I've got to just get my consistency up first, and yeah. so the short term goal will be really, yeah, really something I should focus on first, which I want to do. And no, really good stuff. Okay, so um, what time would suit you to come in and maybe do an induction into the gym? Uh, I would say mornings before work. Yeah. So. Sort of seven a.m. ish should yeah. probably be great. Perfect. Shower and then go. Yeah. And what day? What, what day would you like to come in? Would you, we can a, we any can any day, any day at all. Yeah. We can do. We can set it up either tomorrow or, or two days. For you. Tomorrow works. Yeah. yeah tomorrow okay. Works. So if we book it in for seven o'clock in the morning, I'm working actually myself in the morning, so I'll be here. I can book that in at seven o'clock, and we'll take you through like an induction. And what I do then is I write you a basic gym, like the, a gym program that we can start working on straight away. Brilliant. All right. Yeah. So thanks very much Thank for coming you. again today. Oh, and see you in the morning. Fantastic. Thank you very much.